what we're about to say is so, in a way, um, distorted, twisted, ignored, covered up by the mainstream media that we almost don't need a hundred days to judge Donald Trump. Usually you judge a president by what he does in the first hundred days. You can almost judge him by the first hundred hours. You know, he, so much has been done that, that tells you who he is and what he's like. So I want to ask a simple question. Uh, is Trump Christian? What is the truth about Donald Trump? Because a lot of the electoral uh, base in America is Christian. A lot of people are Christian, but they might go to churches that don't talk about politics. I believe that it is mandated in the Bible to talk about good government, right? How do we have a good society if government is evil? You know, if government were communist or Nazi, I mean, you couldn't possibly uh, live, uh, you know, the kind of life that God wants you to live, right? If you're always under fear of saying the wrong thing, you're under threat of imprisonment and fines and people are going to snitch and tell on you. This is the way people lived in communist countries. So God uh, has a lot to say about government. Uh, some of the books literally say First Kings, Second Kings. There's a book called Book of Judges. So these clearly are models for Christians, for all believers, to understand what is God's ideal government. And regardless of whether you're Christian or not, you will still benefit from that kind of system. That's why the freest countries in the world are Christian-founded countries, countries founded by Christians, right? And they have the freedom whether they're Jew, Jewish or uh, Hindu or Buddhist, they have the greatest peace and the greatest freedom in the Christian countries. So God's government is very good for everybody, all right? And that's the good thing about um, biblical values. It's really good for everybody. But uh, the left, when they say, we love tolerance, it means you must tolerate what they believe, and if you don't believe like them, they're completely intolerant nuts. They say, we love diversity, but they don't mean diversity of conservatives and Christians and libertarians and people who believe in traditional values and men and women, uh, you know, are the, uh, the head of a house and children need a uh, father and mother. And they don't believe in that kind of diversity. They just believe in skin-deep diversity. Well, how shallow is that? You have diversity because there's a range of melanin. Uh, aren't people more than their skin color? Yeah? Diversity should be in, in thoughts, in ideas, and they're completely monolithic, the left. They don't believe in intellectual, spiritual diversity at all. So let's talk about, is Donald Trump Christian? We do care about that. Jesus warned that there would be, in the last days, deep deception. Here it is, Matthew chapter 24, and he said, and then many will be offended. How many people are offended by Donald Trump? How many protests going on out there? Hey, you're a sore loser. You, your candidate didn't win this round. That's it. Get over it. But no, they are offended. Jesus is right, isn't he? They will betray one another and will hate one another. I never thought that there would be people I know that could hate so much, but they are filled with hate. People who go to church filled with hate. Yeah, it's happening right now. Jesus predicted that they would be here in the last days. In the old days, to be a Christian, you know, everybody persecuted Christians. You couldn't afford to hate anybody. You had to walk in love, and people gave their neck and their lives, right? And, and people would slap them, would torture them, would even crucify them, and Christians would not retaliate. But now it's all about my rights and what I want. And you'll see, these people will be judged very swiftly this year. You cannot have that. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. And these are the people basically who say, I'm not deceived. I can't be deceived. I'm beyond deception. Those are the ones that are the greatest candidates for deception. If you don't want to be deceived, you must realize Jesus said, you, yes, you, as smart as you are, as wonderful as you are, you can go the wrong side. You can join the wrong team. And it will happen so subtly, the devil boils you slowly. Right? You want to boil a frog, you don't throw him into a, a boiling pot of water. He will jump out. You boil him slowly. So is Trump Christian? 
Well, I can't say if Trump's Christian unless I can go to the White House and confirm, Mr. President, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? And I would welcome that invitation. I would go there. However, what I can go by is his words and his actions. And uh, Trump told David Brody of Christian Broadcasting Network, CBN, on the 16th of June, 2015, first of all, I'm Protestant. I'm Presbyterian. I'm proud of it. I'm very proud of it. Believe me, if I run and I win, I will be the greatest representative of the Christians that they've had in a long time. That's what he said. You might not believe him. You might believe him. During 2015, uh, he made a campaign speech in Las Vegas. Quote, if you're from Syria and you're a Christian, you cannot come into this country. And they're the ones that are being persecuted. And if you're Islamic and you come in, hard to believe, you can come in so easily. Now, what does the left do? Remember, the left always goes to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We're trying to train Christians, go to the tree of life. It's not about whether you're right or wrong. It's not about whether the statement is, you know, absolutely perfectly verified. What was the life in this statement? What was the heart? Well, the Marxist media don't care. They say Trump was wrong. How was he wrong? Well, Trump said none of the Christians can come in. You know what? Trump was wrong. In fact, if you look at this graph, you can see that from a period of 2011 to 2015, uh, 2,098 Muslims came in, and there you go. 61 Christians came in. So Trump is wrong from the perspective of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You want to pick about right and wrong, good and evil? Okay, you're right. Trump's wrong. But what about the lives that are being tortured and beheaded? Trump is talking about those people, and for eight years, Obama did nothing for those people. 61 people? You're talking about... So immigration absorbed 97% Muslim refugees. And the people who were being most persecuted, mo they are most vulnerable, were the Christians, and 61 came in. So that's 2, you know, what is that? 2.8%. So Trump should have said, you know, 97% of the refugees are Muslim, and only 2.8% of the Christians come in. So let's do something about it. So he tried to do something about it on the 27th of January. Remember, this is his first week in office. He tries to help the Christians. But the Marxist media twisted it and said he passed a Muslim ban. And I covered this very thoroughly, and it, it was a springboard to covering many other biblical topics. I encourage you to find the whole truth about the Trump's immigration ban. But I ask a simple question. Have you even read the ban that they hated on so much in the mainstream media? Here it is. Executive order is called Protecting the Nation from Foreign Terrorist Entry into the United States. So it doesn't sound like a Muslim ban. It's a terrorist ban, right? In any country where there's a lot of terrorists. Section 5B, I read to you, to the extent permitted by law to prioritize refugee claims made by the individuals on the basis of religious-based persecution. If you're persecuted, we want to give you preference. Did any of the Christians and the, so, you know, the compassionate left even read this? But you see, what was happening was the Christians couldn't even make it on the boats. They are refugees, but on the boats, the Muslims threw them off into the water. The few who made it into the refugee camps were raped, abducted, their children were kidnapped. So what happened to the Christians? They had to leave the refugee camps. And so in the end, the Muslims created the chaos. Then the Muslims are in the refugee camp, and they say, we're the ones that need to be recognized for our refugee status. Well, what happened to the Christians? Nobody cared. The left didn't care. The government didn't care. There was no pursuit of, of the most vulnerable people. And so this order was saying, we want to save you if you're persecuted based on religion, but here's the clause. Provided that the religion of the individual is a minority religion in the individual's country of nationality. In fact, it was very wisely worded. So you can't just say, I'm persecuted, I'm persecuted. They all want to leave for economic betterment. But that's not a human right to leave your country and come to 
my country so that you have better economics. It's not a right, right? A refugee means that your life is in danger. That's the definition of a refugee. You're not a refugee because you, don't, you, you, you wish to have more refrigerators and internet connection, faster speed. That's not it. And you want to eat up the government social welfare in Germany or Australia. So Trump did it so well. He said, minority, uh, persecuted based on religion, provided you're in the minority. Can't just be in the majority and wave your hand and say, recognize me. Well, Trump has come out with a revised executive order because that one is being held up in court by some um, anti-Christian federal judge in Washington. So he's come up with a revised one and mainly the new executive order concerning immigration and refugee admission suspends U.S. entrance by people from six countries. Iran, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, Yemen, instead of the original seven. So it excludes Iraq now. I think there's you know, been so much immigration from Iraq. A lot of people have families they're trying to bring over. So they recognize that in America. There's been a lot of ties and a lot of flow between America and Iraq. So they exclude that. But you look at most of the other countries that are here, you know, besides Iran, they don't even have a functioning central government. Where do you get legitimate passports? You could go and buy a passport off the black market. So until this thing stabilizes, Trump is asking for a 90-day pause to review. Nothing like the immigration ban that goes on against the Jews in Muslim countries. But the left don't care. They're selective, right? They're irrational left, as I call it. So again, I talked about all that in Donald Trump's immigration ban. The truth about Donald Trump's immigration ban. A lot more than just immigration. You'll learn a lot from that one-hour teaching. All right, and what else did Trump do? In day three of being in office, Trump reinstated a ban on providing federal money to international NGOs that perform abortions or provide information on abortions. So he comes into office and he signs executive order, we're not going to give $600 million to baby killers abroad. Every Christian should recognize that that is a Christian action even though, yes, you and I may not be able to verify if he has a personal faith in God, a genuine relationship the way that you and your church might define it. But he's doing more than you and your church can do for babies. God is using him. That's the thing. God uses people that you might disapprove of. You have no right to criticize because you may be speaking against God's minister. So let me tell you the truth about this. Donald Trump wasn't doing something misogynist, something against women's health. He was doing exactly what Ronald Reagan did. This is called the Mexico City policy because it was passed in Mexico City under Ronald Reagan's administration. And it has been enforced by every Republican president and suspended by every Democrat president after their inauguration. So Bill Clinton rescinded the policy, all right, of not giving money to abortion clinics abroad, he rescinded the policy on January 22, 1993. That's when he came in, two days after he came in. George W. Bush reinstated Ronald Reagan's Mexico City policy on January 22, 2001, two days after he came into office. Barack Obama rescinded it on January 23, 2009, and then Donald Trump reinstated it on January 23, 2017. So the fake news made this out to be some aberrant behavior, some weird new order that attacks women, when the truth is it was just normal politics and people elected Trump because they want conservative values to be governing the, the country. And he's doing what the people elected him to do. Nothing strange at all. Then they say, well, he's signing so many executive orders. Well, hang on. Barack Obama signed more executive orders in his first 12 days than Donald Trump did. So you can do a comparison. Bill Clinton signed nine in the first 12 days. First dozen days, George Bush, four executive orders. Barack Obama, 19. And Donald Trump has signed 18. Nothing unusual is going on that warrants the hysteria, the 
trumped up outrage that the left is trying to stir up. They're just stirrers. They're a bunch of talkers and protesters. Go and do something productive so we can believe your philosophy and your ideology is good for mankind. Go do something productive. Protesting is not productive. It's destructive. So, what do we believe about rulers and presidents, politicians? We want them to promote a culture of life. And the Bible says very clearly, abortion is murder. I know that touches the heart of people, especially if you're sitting in church and you're listening and you, you've had an abortion. Well, abortion it is murder. You just killed a vulnerable human being. It is a sin, but it's not the unforgivable sin. It's not like you've done it and now God hates you and he doesn't want you to come to church. We're saying sin is sin. Everybody's got a different sin, and this is a very bad sin. We have a lot more murderers walking around the streets than people realize. But people think, well, this is sanitized murder because I don't really see the head of the baby being ripped off. I don't see the dismemberment of the limbs. But you've killed a human being when you do that. So we want a culture of life, and Donald Trump has immediately promoted a culture of life. So is Trump pro-life? We might not be able to answer, is Trump a bona fide Christian, born-again Christian? But is he pro-life? Resoundingly, yes. That's a good thing for the country. How about this? Is he pro-Christian? Let's give you some evidence that the fake news, Marxist media won't tell you. Donald Trump pledged at the first national breakfast that he attended to destroy the Johnson Amendment. What is that? It's something that blocks political activity by churches. Now, you might not understand this. You've got to study history that politicians and governments have this knack for growing, raising taxes, usurping more power, and then becoming really harassing of the people. Every country, all through history, people who get power, you know, Machiavelli says, I think it's Machiavelli says, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. The more you edge towards getting absolute power, the more absolutely you will act corruptly unless you're a Christian. But even the Christians don't do so well. They should do well, they should do better, but they don't study politics and good government, what the Bible says. So they just think, oh, I just got a ticket to heaven. I'm waiting to die and go to heaven. That's not Christianity. That's not what we're preaching. That is truly a false gospel, right? So we're supposed to change the culture. We're supposed to invade the culture. How do we do that? Well, because government has had such a poor history, of turning into tyranny, and it happens so fast, and it kills so many people. Government has started more wars. Well, only government starts war, actually. All wars are started by government, right? So government has killed more people than any other institution. So when we're not aware of this, I'm not saying government is not from God. You also need good government. But what is good government? Well, one of the checks and balances that we found out through, you know, Christian revival in Europe is because government is like this and tends towards corruption and immorality, we should have an independent check and balance, which is called the church. A strong church is the only institution in society that keeps moral check on government. The reporters often don't have morals. They don't have principles and standards. You can see how they're reporting now. So the only people that keep government in check are the church, uh, churches, and the preachers. So guess what politicians do? They attack the church. And they made a Johnson Amendment to say, you can't criticize, you can't make comments about politicians. You might as well be brain dead. What's the point of knowing morality if we don't apply it to people who are very immoral? You see? So they create laws that protect themselves, but they're wrong laws, they're immoral laws. They're bad laws. So Trump says, this Johnson Amendment, I'm going to destroy it. Nobody else that claimed to be Christian even talked about the Johnson Amendment. Quote, it was the great Thomas Jefferson who said, this is Donald Trump speaking, the God who gave us life gave us liberty. Jefferson asked, can the liberties of a nation be secure when we have removed a conviction that these liberties are a, the gift of God? 
Among those freedoms is the right to worship according to our own beliefs. That is why I will get rid of and totally destroy the Johnson Amendment and allow our representatives of faith to speak freely and without fear of retribution. Praise the Lord. Here is Mr. Johnson himself. The Johnson Amendment is a provision in the U.S. tax code that prohibits all 501c3 nonprofit organizations from endorsing or opposing political candidates. It was proposed by Senator Lyndon B. Johnson of Texas and enacted in 1954. Um, really one of the most antichrist provisions. And then he later went on from senator to become a president of the United States of America. So this really is uh, a tragedy for religious freedom. It's clearly against the Constitution, but like I say, they uh, pay lip service to the Constitution. They pay this holy homage to the Constitution, but then through the courts, they just violate it. So what I love about the Trump revolution and the Trump effect is, as it goes in America, so it will go to in Australia. We will change because America is changing. I mean, we literally copied these sentences from the American uh, Johnson Amendment, and then we applied it to our charities tax code. And what is that? I mean, you can't apply morals. You can't talk about abortion if a politician believes in violating what is most sacred in our religious belief. You can't talk about that. That's absurd. But because people aren't clear, you know, we can talk about it, but because people aren't clear, right, and they're afraid they might cross the line, then people say nothing. But for evil to, to triumph, for all, all that needs to happen for evil to triumph is that good people do nothing. You don't have to introduce people, evil into the world. There's already lots and lots of evil in the world. We are the salt of the earth. What do you think that means? God said we're the salt of the earth. Yeah? And some of the greatest believers in the Bible were rulers. They were rulers, right? Nehemiah, Daniel, David, Solomon. These people are people who believe God and then brought their morality into a righteous government. All right, so thank God uh, Trump is going to destroy the Johnson Amendment. We're waiting for that to happen. All right, is he pro-Christian? Come on, Christians, think about it. Rather than accepting all these smears and slurs against Trump, what is he doing? Here's another headline news. March 1st, Trump flushes Obama's guidelines on transgender bathrooms. I'm telling you, this, this whatever they did in America was copied right over here. Right? Obama, without consulting the will of the people or the Congress, just said, I make a new policy guideline through the Department of Education that you must make provision to indoctrinate kids about... Uh, transgenderism. Well, it's not the business of school, and it's also not the business of, of anybody to talk to my children about transgender or anything sexual. But Obama brought that in, and guess what was the news here? We in Australia, we are like sheep. We follow immediately. You know, Australians don't like the word sheep, but we are really, we are like that. We just follow. So I heard that public schools were supposed to implement uh, transgender bathrooms, and uh, I don't know where that's at, but I pray against that. I stand against um, early sexualization of children, right? I love all politicians. I wish all of them come to know Jesus, the Savior who died on the cross for their sins, but uh, whether they do or not, I want to protect children from such left-wing experiments. Is Trump pro-Christian? How about this? I knew this news, but I didn't want to report it until I heard it officially from Ivanka Trump. She tweeted out, meeting with president and NGOs working to combat human trafficking. Donald Trump is to bring full force and weight of the government to the issue. What can be more righteous than going out to save kids? You know, kids get abducted and, and, and then traded for in the sex pedophile industry. And supposedly, they've found pedophile rings among judges, among politicians. That's why it never gets addressed. Ivanka Trump, dad is destroying DC pedophile network. She's the one that came out and said, there's a ring of pedophilia, pedophiles in the District of Columbia. 
Why is the MSM, the Marxist media, ignoring Trump's sex trafficking busts? In the first month since Trump took office, there have been 1,500 arrests related to human sex trafficking and pedophilia. Is that unusual? Definitely, compared to 400 such arrests in the entire year of 2014, according to the FBI. I mean, he's busting them up. Where is the jubilation among the so-called compassionate left? Looking out for the downtrodden. How about looking after people who are being trafficked like sex slaves? Donald Trump is doing it. How can you be against what is happening? The swamp is being drained. You know how you can be against it? Because you are the swamp. You hate it because you are the one that is part of the problem. And the swamp is speaking out. When you hear the mainstream speak, the swamp is speaking. So we are going to keep an eye on current news like this, but I thought I'd make one definitive um, teaching about is Donald Trump Christian? But we'll keep an eye on this and on any relevant news to the end times and bring a Christian perspective through our website, newswars.com.au. We've cast a vision. We've asked for your support. We need more support. We need, you know, as this grows, I think we're going to need people to be, uh, you know, on live chat and uh, admin and uh, taking care of forums and things like that. We want it to be interactive. But, you know, we have to sleep in Australia, and most of you guys, uh, you know, that, that take up the traffic of the internet are probably living in America and Canada. So uh, we need more staff, we need more brains, we need more creativity, we need more facilities, we need more computers, we need more servers, all of that. But we've started. That's what I can say. How far do we go? It's up to you, God and me. We can work together. But I think that we can combat fake news because people are fed up and they know that they are the swamp. They are the swamp. So we want to bring a Christian perspective fearlessly. We bring it respectfully. We don't trash anybody. We want to know the truth, and we want to know God's heart about where we're at. Then we can pray. We can respond. We can do the right thing. Amen? So please pray for newswars.com.au, and if you'd like to be a part in any way, just um, write to us, report at newswars.com.au. If you've got stories to tell, if you've got things to share and expose, we have a dedicated uh, line, report at newswars.com.au. So we're taking this very seriously. We're preparing for the end time. Remember, look up. Jesus is coming very soon.